Hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today, this is a beginner's breakdown uh, for the Frostmourne class. So, let's just get into it. And yes, this is a beginner's guide, because I am by no means an expert, but I thought I would share you guys my tips, and you know, let's just talk about what it, uh, you know, how to play Frostmourne. So, let's start, just start by talking what it means to be Frost, Frostmourne. So, obviously, you start with the Frost Glove, and uh, so... You'll have, like, the hardest aim weapon, like, automatically off the bat. So you need to be, like, in order to use it effectively, you have to be pretty good at aiming. Which is something that, uh, I am not. And something that I definitely have to work on. But, um, yeah. So keep that in mind, that Frostmourne is definitely an aim-intensive class. Unlike some others where, you know, they've got really good, like, AoE and high hitbox, or large hitbox, um, attacks. But yeah, so, the arrow... It's very good, but it's definitely like one of the higher damaging weapons as well. Like if you charge it down like a lot, it can do tons of damage compared to other weapons. So it is it's very like high um high difficulty but uh, like definitely high reward. Like you can do tons of damage especially with like um when you get the buffs you get later on in the game. So yeah, that's your main weapon. Now, what do you get for actually being Frostmourne? Because you'll always have this ice arrow, and how is it different if you're actually maining Frostmourne? So obviously the main effect, and I'm sure you guys have all seen this, but when you shoot an arrow, you make an ice trail. And on this ice trail, like I am right now, you can just ice skate along, which is <laughs> kind of one of the funnest things in this game to me. Oh, uh, let's not go that way. <laughs> but it is so fun just to be able to skate around the map. It's probably one of the best mobility, um, like options in the game like just from a class it's probably this like this uh trait alone probably makes um frostmourne one of the best mobility classes like in the entire game because like it doesn't cost you anything it's not like a firefly where you have to you know do your sorcery and then jump through a fire or like even the um earth i mean the the wind um where you like rise on the tornado this you know you just do a regular attack and it makes the, uh, this massive trail of ice and you can just like go super fast on it and it is really fast compared to other things and so you know you just want to always be doing this because it just makes you a lot faster so you know like oh going to a castle you can just throw this quickly skate up the stairs you know grab your potions blah 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 jump off throw a thing from the sky and you're quickly skating away it just oh, it's such awesome mobility and you know just quickly oh whoop, pop this and then just skate super fast away. So yeah, really awesome mobility. So it can be good for getting away from enemies or getting towards them. Or just, you know, like <laughs> if you're out of the zone and you need to get in quickly, like you can, I'm pretty sure you can actually outrun the zone when you're on the ice tra trails. It's really good. But yeah, and but do, uh, the one thing to keep in mind about the ice trails is that uh, it's not only for you. Other people can also um, ice skate on these trails, uh, including your enemies. So if you're trying to run away from someone and you keep doing this, um, yes, you will be faster, but they can also ride on these ice trails, so they can be hot on your heels if you're throwing this, because they can ice skate behind you. But there are ways, like, things you can do about that to counteract, and we'll talk about that the, later. But, like, an example of something, like, like if you know someone's behind you, you can, like, quickly turn around and do something that'll actually turn it into, like, a freezing, freezing aura. And, uh, yeah. But just keep in mind that, yes, other people can ride on your thing. But so that's also good for your team, because then your whole team can move together if they, like, stay with you you know, slide on the ice together. So yeah, really awesome mobility. That's probably one of the, that's probably actually the best thing about Frostmourne is its amazing mobility. So that's the um, effect you get just um, from being Frostmourne. But uh, the second effect I believe you get is, um, might not be the second, but another one is that when you are casting your uh, um, sorcery, you are invincible while it activates. So like when, not while you're holding it down, I don't believe, it's only when you release it, or else you could just like, like pretend I'm holding down the ice one. I could just like be invincible and not be invincible, invincible and not invincible and it costs me nothing. It's only like when they're actually doing the animation of releasing it, you're fully invincible, which is pretty cool. You know, if you're in a tight situation, you can throw that out and if it gives you some, you know, invincibility, just a little bit longer to survive. And also, Another upgrade that it gets as time progresses, you know, when you go to further zones. I'm pretty sure this is the third one. Um, it actually, the actual, um, the field from the sorcery will actually block uh, wind and fire attacks, I believe. Maybe toxic as well, I'm not quite sure, but it definitely blocks wind and fire. So that's really good. It acts as a bit of a shield against certain elements, but, you know, not everything. So it doesn't block against earth and, you know, other eyes. But, you know, it's good to, you know, have a shield. So it becomes quite a good defensive tool. Um... You know, when you're low on health, when it's getting near to the end of the game, because you're invincible for a bit, and it also blocks certain elements. 
So that's really cool. And the last upgrade that you get is something that's really useful, and that is the ability to float while you're charging your um, shots. Usually this doesn't happen and you just fall down like normally. Like if I was to like, um, actually not really with Earth, actually it's the same as Earth, so you have the same arc of your jump. Like when you press an attack with other elements, but when you have, um, when you're in the last phase with your um, Frostborn, you actually have this glide and you can hold it down for like a full five seconds before you actually get dropped to the ground. So yeah, it's a really, really good thing for aiming because you know, you can stay in the sky while you like aim up your shots and charge it from the air. So, you know, it's really good. Um, like not only for like mobility, like cause you know, you can be moving around while you're shooting as well, but it's also just good for aiming your shots like from the air cause it keeps you still and you're not having to like move with your um, jump arc. So it makes it a lot easier to hit your shots. And it also, you know, holds you in the sky, and people can't see you as easily if you're in the sky, so sometimes it can be like a bit of a sneaky maneuver, because like, you're charging up this thing and they don't even see you, and then you're just gonna hit them with a ma- Excuse me. <laughs> you're gonna hit them with a massive chunk of damage if you hit them, and like, they're nearly dead, just because you, like, hit in the sky and like, shot them with this, sniped them. So yeah, that's a really awesome ability. So now let's quickly talk about the sorcery. Um, Frostmourne's sorcery is actually probably the one of the um, most lackluster sorceries, at least in my opinion. Um, obviously, once again, I'm no pro. But yeah, essentially it just makes it the field where, in which everything will freeze, including your opponent. But I don't find it that useful because it doesn't hold them frozen for that long. It like, honestly only really holds them for long enough, um, long enough for you to like, uh, like get one Frostmourne shot off. So it's, it's not that crazy effective. Like if you're running around and then like, you see your opponent with someone like walk past you or you're like you're right really close to them you can throw that out they'll freeze you can maybe get two shots off or like a charged one like a semi-charged one and get like a decent chunk of damage so it is don't get me wrong it is very useful but it it is like not as useful as some other sorceries are like for their for their class they don't bring too much to the table because it's really awesome like even without it like you could win a game without ever using this sorcery um, and as I showed there, uh, or, or as I went to show there, but now it's gonna have to charge up. Um, uh, what people use it for a lot is just like, you know, for sorcery cancels. So, you know, when you're in the air, and especially when you've been running on your eyes, pretend I'm doing this with the, um, the, the frost mode sorcery. But, like when you've got this momentum and you're holding down a sorcery, you actually go into like a weird glide state. So see, if I, I'm just standing still and I hold this, you kind of get like float into in the air for a bit while it, it like holds down and then you can cancel it by just pressing an attack button but um especially once you've been like ice skating along and then you jump in the air and do it you actually have some momentum and you keep going forwards so this can lead to you having like really long reaching jumps so if you're trying to like you know jump off of a cliff or you know just have some good distance you can you know jump in the air do this and you know reach really far and i could have shot an arrow and like on the ground and start ice skating again but it, it essentially just makes you like you can get really long traveling jumps just by cancelling the sorcery in the air and that's what most people are going to use it for but yes it is very good as a um, defensive tool as well like once you get into the later levels because you're invincible for a brief period and it also will block certain elements so yeah it's by no means a bad sorcery i just think it's a little bit boring and lackluster and very situational for where it can be um useful but yeah, that's basically the um, the basics of Frostmourn. Um, just something quick about the um, arrow shots is yes, obviously they do more damage the more you charge them up. Wow, 108 damage. You see that from the fully charged... That's like someone's entire health bar. If they don't have any shields, they're instantly dead from that one shot just hitting them. That's crazy. But um, obviously it does do like less damage if you don't charge it up. See, 27 compared to like, if you, even if you charge it for a little bit, it does 41 if you charge it even more. 60 and then obviously you know you can get big damage you know, the more you hold it but um uh it also changes like how far the thing will shoot so if i just hold the same like trajectory or like aim here see it'll fall down kind of like about there but if you hold straight it travels a lot faster and a lot further so it's good for a lot better for sniping if you hold it down because it won't arc as much and it'll just go like nearly in an ex like perfect straight line like from most distances like obviously it does arc but like it goes so fast and so far that you can barely notice it but yeah that's the basics of the frostborn class let's quickly talk about how it synergizes with other elements and since i've got the earth one uh the earth gauntlet 
we can talk about it first. So the main way that Earth and Wind Gauntlets actually synergize with um, uh, Frostmourne is um, with the Ice Trail specifically. Because if you break the Ice Trail, as I kind of alluded to before, it actually creates this like mist that completely freezes your opponent if they stand in it for too long. So uh, that can be really useful. So you can make these like big walls of like tons of like freezing mist and if your opponents try to like walk through like if you've got like I don't know some area that you're trying to like you know where there's a bunch of you and they try and like come past this like and they just like walk through yes it's not amazing because it does take a few seconds and obviously someone like if they see they can jump over it but it's just a good thing to remember and it doesn't cost you anything like it's just two attacks and then there's like a freezing field on screen and that's really good and like if the opponent gets frozen by it you, you know you can get it off another shot so if you say wait let me go Get over to this guy because he's a little bit closer. Oh, okay. okay uh, so, like, if you shoot someone and then, like, do the earth shatter, like, it'll make the field, and if they, like, don't move fast enough or they move in the wrong direction, they'll actually get frozen again. And, you know, if they're frozen again, you can get a big charge, and that whole sequence there, if they get hit by the whole thing, like, obviously that's unlikely. And then they get hit by this, and then like they get frozen, and you've charged up a full attack. Like they're basically dead. Like that full sequence would do a ton of damage if it all went perfectly for you. But like obviously, even if like you know some of your attacks miss, and then you've just got this cloud up, and then that freezes them, then you can get an arrow shot off, or even just like if you accidentally do another one of these, like that's still going to do a big chunk of damage just because you've managed to freeze them accidentally. And um, you can actually do it really fast. So like what I was talking about, a lot of the time, like when so you shoot, if you're on the ground and you like shoot someone with an ice arrow, uh, I usually follow it up with an earth, because then it like breaks the entire trail and makes that mist. So not only will the arrow hit, it'll also um, like make the big um, freezing ice situation. And it, the opponent, uh, okay, and that was kind of awkward there because of how the, the earth is like sideways there. But like a lot of the time, if they're in the, hello. <laughs> if they're in the right position, they'll get frozen again by the. Excuse me, what? This just happened before. It happens most of the time. Yeah, they'll get frozen by this, and then you can get another attack off. And so yeah, so a lot of the time, you know, shoot an arrow, do this, and then you can shoot another arrow. And if they get frozen, then you can shoot another one, and then do this, and then you've made another freezing field, and maybe they'll get frozen again. So yeah, it's really good to just keep shooting ice and breaking it, because then there's so many opportunities for the uh, opponent to accidentally get frozen. And the way it can actually be done really quickly, like if you're, um, like if you want them to follow up quickly, because, you know, if they get hit by this, they can, like, move out of the way of this field, because that, you know, the earth gauntlet comes out pretty slow. But if you do something like, uh, wait, what am I doing? Oh yeah, so like, if you're, like, shooting from the air, you can actually quickly follow up. I don't mean to do that. I didn't mean to move my cursor. Um, you f if you follow it up with the Earth Sorcery, that actually comes out really quickly, like almost just after the um, the, the uh, shot will hit. Like straight after it hits, and then it makes a really big field of freezing, and then it'll freeze them, and then you know, you can get off another shot, and all that good stuff again. So yeah, that's basically how Earth is gonna synergize with ice. It's basically just about constantly placing ice and breaking it either with, you know, your sorcery to have it really quickly, or if you want, you know, you can just place out a lot of ice, you know, smash it all and bake these really big fields of like where the opponent can get frozen in. So yeah. Uh we'll just quickly talk about wind, because it basically acts in the exact same way. Um, except it's just a little bit worse at it because um you have to like break the pieces of ice individually for it to make that mist, so it, it can't be done as, like, autonomously as with, um, Earth, who just, like, can break the entire line in one attack. So you have to, like, individually break all of them. But, you know, it's just something good to keep in mind that, you know, you can still do the same thing, like, similar things that you would do with, um, Earth with the wind caller. It just takes a little bit more effort. Uh, yeah, and no, it, like, you can't make a frozen tornado, unfortunately. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so Earth and Air work very similarly um, in their synergies. Lightning is pretty simple. Like, with either the puddles, like there, or even with the um, ice trails, if you sh sh uh, hit it with lightning, it will, you know, make, like, a field of lightning, and anyone that goes near it will get shocked. 
and you can make it like a really long line of um, lightning. Like where if anyone walks near this and they get shocked. And that can be really good like if, you know, someone's trying to chase you down and you're running away. Just like how the earth, like if you run around and like quickly do something. Um, and like you can like break the ice and have them get frozen. But, you know, you can do something similar with this. Like quickly like shoot this and then shoot their feet. And then not only will you hit them with the lightning, it'll electrify the, the thing so then they can't attack you for a little bit. So then you can maybe get another shot off before they can, and it just helps you like run away or like you know you can just get more damage. So, you know if you shoot this, and then they they're standing near ice, and you shoot that, then they get shocked, and you can maybe should get another ice off, and then you get another one of these, and you know the opponent keeps getting shocked, and you can keep doing more attacks. Like obviously they're not stuck there, but then they can't attack you, and the more they can't attack you, is the more opportunity you have to attack them and not trade. So yeah, that's really good. Good, and the same thing basically applies with the lightning bolt, obviously. Um, it does basically the exact same thing. So I usually don't do that. I usually just stick to like chopping it with this because it, you know, it costs less. It's not <laughs> but you know, if you stri strike them with lightning and like do that big chunk of damage and they're shocked, you know, that's also very good. Um, to fire is actually an interesting one and not one that I actually um, knew about long before recording this. But um, I realized the last time I was playing that you can actually make like smoke grenades basically like they're clouds of steam just by like um burning or throwing fireballs at the ice or even at the water so if i throw the ice out and then it melts it'll do the uh, exact same thing it'll make these big steam clouds and yes these aren't gonna uh, no these aren't gonna protect you from um damage or anything but you know they're just like in any game they're basically just a smoke bomb like they they're surprisingly thick and it, it's almost impossible to see someone through these and no, it's not going to protect you from damage, but it's a really good, like, cover for your team. Or, like, if you, you don't want someone to know exactly where you are, you, like, you know, you can throw out an ice trail and then break it. You can even actually do your, um, flame wall sorcery, and that'll make, like, the, the steam, like, instantly. And, you know, it doesn't look like much when you're actually standing in it, so, which is kind of good because, you know, you can see through it slightly. But, like, people standing in there... It, it's quite hard to see them. So I find that a pretty cool thing. So, you know, you can put out a bunch of ice and, like, just make, you know, a bunch of steam bombs and, like, smoke grenades, basically. And just make it insanely hard for the opponent to actually see you and, like, know how to exact you attack. And you can you know, come on it, come in on them without them really realizing where you are. So, yeah, I find that really good. So, yeah. like, especially when you're getting near the end of the game and they're look, looking for you specifically. And you come at them, like, obviously they know you're near, somewhere near here because of all this, like, smoke and stuff. But they can't really, like, target you specifically because they don't really know where you are. So, yeah. That's really good. And, you know, as I showed, the same thing applies uh, with the firewall. If you place the fi fires on it, it'll make the steam bombs with them as well. And something interesting about those, similar to how Toxic will show before, you can actually freeze these steam clouds and make these little, like, these walls of cover where, you know, you can hide behind and, you know... You're a bit safe for a while. And these can't be broken, I think, except for by um fire. But if they do fire, then you've just got another you've just got another smoke grenade and it's a really like the <laughs> then you've just got more cover. So yeah, I find that really cool. So like you can throw out a bunch of this and have these like big things. And then if someone's trying to attack you, you can like quickly like shoot a bunch here and they make this oh wait, I didn't do it fast enough. So yeah, I make this. Make a few smoke grenades, and then I just quickly shoot them. Now I've got this cover that I can hide behind and they can't really shoot me and I'm getting protected from damage. And even if they are fire and they can break these, it's not going to hurt me that much. Like, I'll, maybe I'll take a little bit of damage from the, like, actual explosion. But, um, and then I'll just have a smoke grenade. So, like, it's not even like my cover's blown, so they still don't really know where I am. So, yeah. I just find that very interesting and I, I really enjoy that. And, hey, wait. If I turn that and then make this into seam with this firewall... And I actually can do this sorcery and freeze... Okay, that doesn't work very well. But, you know, you can freeze a few different steam clouds at a time with that. So, yeah, that's how fire synergizes with um, Frost Morn. And I didn't actually really know that. And I really uh, can't wait to try that out on um, a few more times online. Because it, it worked pretty well. And I, and I thought it was really fun the first time I did it. So, yeah. Really cool. I love that. Okay, and the last one we have to talk about, I believe, is uh, poison or toxic. And this is what a lot of, a lot of people usually this is their favorite um uh, like pair up with a uh, force uh, simply because you it's almost like you're a uh, toxicologist, like you're a toxic main, 
because you can place down these puddles of um, like toxic now if you um, if you hit them like onto your ice puddles. And so now you can if you throw your toxic attack onto these, it'll turn them into big puddles of ice of um, poison. And you know, obviously, it'll hurt people in it. And they're actually quite large splashes as well. And just like almost all of the others, like the lightning and the earth and, and wind and stuff, if someone's chasing you, you can just turn around and throw this, and then if they're like hot on your heels, and you they're like ripe, oops, and you know, they're chasing after you, you can quickly like turn around and put this there, and they'll accidentally walk into this, and, or like if you do too, then they're just gonna get hurt, and they're like stuck in this, and then they have to jump away, and it's really good for getting someone off of your tail if they're chasing you down, like on your frost trail. Um, the same thing happens, Actually, wait, I think, uh, if you throw this onto it, it'll make some toxic puddles and the toxic clouds, so people die really quick when they're in there. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't have much health. Um, I might actually... Oh, wait, there's no potions in here. Anyways, I'll just try and not get hurt. But, um, also about the sorcery, um, you can, if you want, you can freeze that with, um, that to, like, make some cover, because, you know, that's a really big cloud, that, you know, can jump on. It makes a lot of, a really big like actual part of the land you can hide behind and stuff but uh do be warned when you're doing this because that still counts as a toxic cloud and if a uh, no, oops. if a fire gauntlet user comes by and happens to shoot that while you're behind it that still acts as blue flames and it'll make a huge explosion and make a huge blue flames and uh it's gonna hurt you're gonna be in a lot of pain it's <laughs> so yeah just be careful if you're doing that against fire users. But yeah, that's my basic breakdown of um, talking about the what it means to be Frostmourne. I think it's one of the most interesting classes, even though I'm by no means great at it, because once again, I'm not well versed in a uh, third person shooter or a battle royale game, so my aim is not excellent, but you know, I'm learning, I'm learning. But I think Frostmourne's really fun and I just love the mobility. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I might see you in the next one if you enjoyed, and, but yeah, thanks for watching, I love the support. See you next time, bye.